And as I reported yesterday, Dr. Tedros, and he's not a real doctor. No, he's a PhD. I don't know where he got his PhD from, his doctorate. I won't comment any further about that. Could get into trouble. However, Tedros has admitted now, who could not do it? They could not push their agenda on the world, not because the governments of the world were so careful or so cautious or so unwilling to be trampled over by the globalists, but because people like you and I were out there fighting the globalists. We did it. We did it. It's our victory. So I want you to watch what Tedros says. And you know what? The story about the, the failure of the WHO has only been reported by the Gateway Pundit, Breitbart, and I believe myself. And I haven't even got a story up on the post-millennial. I assume they already got this story. I usually just cover the Canadian side of the news, occasionally do a U.S. story. I do a lot of U.S. news for my column at Human Events, which is associated with the post-millennial. But I usually leave the U.S. news to other reporters. And I don't think they've gotten the story yet. So I'm going to have to see if I can follow up with the post-millennial on the story because it's very few media outlets have got this. But watch how Tedros has responded to this. Also at the assembly, WHO will be launching a new global health strategy developed in partnership with 194 member states and partners, which sets a course for getting the world back on track to hit the health-related sustainable development goals. Crucial decisions are expected on a range of health priorities such as climate and health, WHO's work in health emergencies, access to transformative tools, communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, mental health, women's health, and the reform of WHO itself. On 26 May, WHO will be launching our first investment round, a new mechanism for WHO, which the executive board approved in January. The investment round is designed to ensure that voluntary contributions which are currently the majority of our funding, will be more predictable, flexible, and sustainable. Our new investment case outlines why and how supporting WHO is essential for prog progress in global health and saving millions of lives. It will be launched on 28 May during the Assembly. So, they're not done yet, folks. They're regrouping. They're preparing to attack again. They were unsuccessful with their pandemic agreement. And you may re recall that they had to water it down because there was such opposition. And even the UK said, no, we don't think we can go with this because of the sovereignty issue. Not because they don't love the United Nations and they don't love the World Health Organization, but they really were having qualms about the sovereignty issue. Now, once again, I will emphasize that we've heard nothing from Canada about this. So thank God the WHO collapsed over it, because you know Justin Trudeau would have signed this, and there was absolutely nothing being said from the official opposition. So it looks like we're safe for the meantime. But watch them. Watch what they're going to do in the future. Now, this is the Gateway Pundit. Who Global Pandemic Treaty fails after two years of negotiation? Kami, Ch Kami Chief says he will try everything to reach fresh agreement. You bet he will. This Tedros is dangerous. If you just read his biography, and not the official one, but look this guy up in terms of where he's been in his life. And it really is, he is a complete sham. He's in the the pay of the Chinese. He, is, he made the, the World Health Organization an appendage of China since he's been there. He's being, he is receiving all kinds of favors from China. And this is what it's all about with him. So Tedros... When he says that the World Health Organization... I'm going to put my glasses on for this one. Let me just, no, I can't. CTV News. Who chief 
Tedros confident of eventual pandemic treaty. This is how the world was reporting this. Reuters, PBS. These are all news sources that had no idea the treaty wasn't going to go through. And they were all reporting that smooth sailing for Dr. Tedros. Everything's fine for Dr. Tedros. <laughs> world Health Organization is going to get its way. Well, folks, it didn't happen. And we can thank God for that. And we can thank people like you and I who fought this thing. But I find it amazing that this has been so underreported. Why? Because it's a defeat for the United Nations, for the globalists. It's a defeat. They have gone down. And yeah, they're going to, they're going to come back again with more authoritarian efforts more attempts to take away your individual freedom with more crazy schemes as to how they can do this. And you watch. When the next pandemic comes and you know it's going to be the bird flu, they will do whatever they can to usurp the authority of sovereign nations. You have operated amid a torrent of mis- and disinformation that was undermining your negotiation. You have come a very long way and found much common ground. And you have demonstrated that multilateralism is alive and well. Of course, we all wish that we had been able to reach a consensus on the agreement in time for this held assembly and cross the finish line. But I remain confident that you still will, because where there is a will, there is a way. I know that there remains among you a common will to get this done. So there must always be a way. It's now for this World Health Assembly to decide what that way is, meaning the solution is in your hands. God only knows what's happening with that bird flu. I've, I have heard reports that, that this Dr. Tam, this woman who took all of her talking points from the communist Chinese during the last pandemic, who is our top health officer, the national health officer in Canada, has been meeting with her provincial counterparts on how to sell and market the bird flu as another horrible pandemic that needs the same kind of authoritarian lockdowns and mandates. Forget it. Not going to happen. We've been through this before. We, we understood and we learned you can beat the government and you can say no. Hey, this same liberal government that likes to spout off all the time about it's a woman's right to choose her body let them know that it's your body and you make a decision about vaccines and about what you're going to put in it and about how far you're going to distance and what kind of mask you're going to put on your face so you don't have to breathe in your own carbon dioxide all day. Yeah, you've got to, if you've got the freedom of choice, like this liberal government loves to spout off about, then we're going to exercise that freedom of choice if and when this next pandemic comes around. But I tell you, I am sick of these scare tactics. I'm sick of this fear mongering. I'm sick of being told how to live and how to behave and how to walk around and how to sit down in restaurants and how to deal with my fellow neighbors and humans. We're not going to put up with it. I lost a sister to the pandemic vaccine. She got it because she thought she was making my mother safer in a nursing home. Heather passed away in November. And I'm still dealing with that. That made the potential risk of this vaccine real to me. Very real. Thank you for watching this episode of Stand on Guard and being a part of the Creighton's Right channel. If you've watched this episode to this point, you've watched it all. And that's really important for a small station like this. We always say subscribe, hit the bell, 
Be a part of the Creighton resistance. Resolve to resist. That's what we're doing. And if you become a subscriber, if you're a supporter of this station or a member through Substack, through YouTube, and now you can be a local as well, that's so important to us because I couldn't do this without you. I made a decision to become an independent journalist about a year ago because I wanted to bring all of my experience in the military, in journalism, to you. I don't promise anything I can't deliver. I don't offer clickbait. I offer truth. The truth is out there. And it's my job to bring that truth to light and to you. Thanks for being a part of the Creighton's Right Resistance. And we'll see you again soon. So we are in a very precarious position in this country. We need a political change, but we also need to resolve to resist.